All right, we're on to our second part of our talk on significant figures. So in the last part, we kind of talked about what a significant figure is. It basically has to do with how we make measurements. And the uh, way we make measurements, always the last digit is an estimate. Now, again, in, la in lecture, I should say, you're not going to really spend a whole lot of time taking measurements or being asked about how to take a measurement. You might see a few of those on your homework. But mostly what uh, the way we're going to use significant figures is it's going to help us understand whenever we do any sort of math problem, how to round our answer. So there's some specific rules we use for rounding. And I should tell you, you know, when you do your homework, if you don't round correctly, it's going to be a problem. You're going to lose points for it. So we want to get this figured out the best we can. So uh, the, uh, the rules for rounding are all related to this idea of significant figures. So um, when we do a, a worksheet or whatever, you're not going to be making measurements. You're going to get a number to start with. And the first thing you're going to have to do before you do any calculations or while you're doing the calculations is you're going to have to figure out how many significant uh, figures are in a number. Ultimately, again, this is going to have to do with how we round our work. And if we don't round correctly, um, we're going to lose some points, unfortunately. All right. So let's go over the rules about when I just tell you a number, how many of the digits you see fit in this category called being a significant figure? How many of the digits are called significant figures? All right. So keeping track of this is going to help us round our answers. So there's uh, really four rules when we look at a number and I say, man, tell me how many sig figs are in this number? Well, the first rule says when I just give you a number and I say, how many sig figs are in this number? Any number that's not a zero, any non-zero digit, a five, a three, a two, a one, they fall in this category of being called a significant figure. So if you ain't a zero, I count you. Anything that's not a zero counts. So if I said, gave you these numbers, 123 centimeters, maybe that's the length of something, or maybe, um, I don't know, uh, eight, uh, 87,534 grams, maybe that's the weight of something, or maybe I told you 91.74, I don't know, meters, um, and I said, how many sig figs are in these numbers? How many sig figs are in these numbers? Well, first number, A, that is, uh, they all count. The one, the two, the three. There are three, and usually instead of saying significant figures, we just say sig figs. There are three sig figs. And our second example, 87,537 grams. If it ain't a zero, it counts. In that number, there are five sig figs. They all count. There are five sig figs. All right. What about the last one there? How many sig figs are in that one? Oh, they all count. They all count. So if you ain't a zero, you count. You're a sig fig. So this has four sig figs. All right. If you're not a zero, you're going to fall in this category of being called a significant figure. So where it gets a little trickier is if you are a zero. It turns out zeros sometimes count and sometimes they don't count as far as how many sig figs you have. So if I ask you how many sig figs are in a number, if it's a zero, you got to be a little more careful. And it really depends on where the zero is. If the zero precedes all of the non-zero digits, so another way of saying that is it's the beginning of the number. Those zeros never count as far as sig figs. Oh, well, they're important to write down. But if I say how many fig, sig figs are in this number, you're not going to include the zeros if they're at the beginning of a number. By the way, those zeros are called leading zeros, leading zeros. All right. So let's do a couple examples of that. All right, let's put up a few numbers. In all these examples, again, I'm going to have the zeros at the front of a number. If the zeros are at the front of the number, these zeros are called leading zeros. If the zeros are at the front of a number, they're called leading zeros. So if I look at that, those, these numbers and I tell, say, how many sig figs are in these numbers? In number A, 
Don't don't count the zeros as being sig figs. The two and the three count though. This has two sig figs. And number B, those are leading zeros. Don't count them as being a, a part of your sig fig total. Only the five would. One sig fig. And then what about in number C? How many sig figs are in number C, right? Well, again, leading zeros, beginning of a number don't count. So there are, um, there's four sig figs. The, the one, the two, the four, and the five. There are four sig figs. All right. So zeros at the front, never, ever, ever include them in your total. If you're a zero at the front of a number, never, ever, ever include it in your total. All right. Now, obviously, there's other places zeros can be. Another place you can have a zero, you can have a zero in the middle of a number. A zero in between other digits do count. We are going to include them in our totaling up of sig figs. Zeros in between other non-zero digits, in between twos and fives and threes and ones, they are included in our total. Those zeros are called captive zeros. Let's do an example or two. So let's say I had this number. And I said, hey man, tell me how many sig figs are in that number. Or if I said, here you go, how about if I had this number? And I said, hey man, how many sig figs are in that number? Or let's do one more. What if I gave you this number? A number, you know, these rules apply if you have a number in scientific notation. What if I gave you that number and I said, hey man, how many sig figs are in that number? If you are a zero caught in between other numbers, I count you. You are part of my total. So in number A, one, captive zeros also count, and the eight, they all count. Captive zeros get included and are totaling up. This number has four sig figs. In number B, any zero that's caught in between other digits, fours, threes, and twos, and ones, counts. The four counts if you're anything, uh, if uh, you count if you're not a zero. These zeros do count, right? Zeros are the tricky ones because sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. If they're captive, they do, and so does the seven and the eight. Five sig figs. And then finally, I haven't shown you one with scientific notation. Um, as far as counting up sig figs, the 10 to the 14, you don't really have to think about it. Now, you would still write it down. I'm not saying you wouldn't write it down in your answer. But if I just say, oh, tell me how many sig figs are in this number, just worry about the front part of the number. Um, and then in this front part of the number, how many sig figs are in there? Not a zero, definitely count. A captive zero counts. So, yeah, this guy's going to have three sig figs. All right. So zeros sometimes count, sometimes they don't. If they're in the beginning, you don't count them. If they're in the middle, you do count them. The only other place they can be is at the end. All right. So what if they're at the end? We haven't talked about those yet. Okay. Well, that's another kind of zero. If you're at the end of a number, the far right hand side, you're called a trailing zero. You're at the end of the number. They occur on the right-hand side of the number after all the non-zero digits. Now, this rule is kind of the trickiest one. It says they count only if the number also has a decimal point. If you see a dot, you count them. If you don't see a dot, you don't count them. So these guys sometimes count, sometimes they don't. All right, they're not consistent. With the dot, with the decimal, you count them. No decimal, no count. All right, let's do a couple examples. All right, so let's say I gave you these numbers. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong example. <laughs> what are those? Those are leading zeros. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. We already talked about leading zeros. I'm looking at the wrong example. Go back to my, oh, right here. This is the example we should be doing. So I looked at the wrong page in my notes. That was embarrassing, huh? Oh, well. Won't be the first or the last mistake I make. 
All right. Oh, those are trailing zeros at the right hand side of a number. Um, by the way, let's make that a little bigger. All right. Here is another example of trailing zeros at the right hand side of a number. Or let's do a couple more here. What about this one? Oh, that's a trailing zero, right-hand side of a number. Or here, trailing zero, right-hand side of a number. All right, so let's see um, about this one. Let's see. So I wanna go through and I wanna decide if how many sig figs are in these numbers. If I can't do this, this is gonna be a problem because you have to understand this to understand rounding. That's why we're doing this. So we gotta get this figured out to know how to round our answers. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the number. If it's a trailing zero and I see a decimal, I count them. Trailing zero with a decimal, I count them. That's what I have in A. Trailing zeros with a decimal, five sig figs. In number B, I see trailing zeros again, but no decimal. No decimal, no count. Two, oop. One color, I don't know if that matters. Two sig figs. Number C, trailing zero again with a decimal. Count it. Four sig figs. And finally, number D, trailing zeros again, right hand side of the number. No decimal, trailing zero, no decimal, no count. So this, how many sig figs are in that one, do you think? There's one, just the one. All right. So again, the tricky ones are the zeros. In the beginning, oh, over here, I guess. In the beginning, you count them. In the, uh, you don't count them, I should say. In the beginning, you don't count them. In the middle, you always count them. At the end, you may or may not count them. It depends on uh, whether the, there's a decimal or not. Okay, it depends on whether there's a decimal or not. So with that, let's see if you can do this. Again, if you can't figure this out, if you're struggling with this, it's gonna make you not round answers correctly and that is gonna cost you points and I don't want it to cost you points. So we gotta do uh, pretty good at this. All right, so I'm gonna flip over to another page and we're gonna do a few examples here, okay? So uh, let me flip over and we'll look at a few uh, for a few more examples. Okay, here's a few examples for you to try. Now, for these, um, if I was you, I'd pause it for a minute and see if you can think through these and then we'll go over it. So, uh, you know, uh, let's just do a little, a, a few, maybe try to do a few practice ones, you know, not for any points or anything, but if you just watch me go over it, that's okay, but it's gonna make a lot more sense if you can do it. You're gonna have to be able to do this for the rest of the semester. So let's give it a shot. So I'll stop talking for a second. You can hit pause so you can actually try it. And then uh, I'll start, start talking again in just a sec when you're ready to hear the answers. All right, I hope you gave these a shot instead of just waiting for me to do it for you, all right? Oh, waiting for your teacher to do things for you. That's not gonna help you learn. You gotta really try stuff. All right, so I hope you tried them. Let's do it. Let's go through them though. All right, number A. I wanna know how many sig figs are in this number. 0 0.0035, what kind of zeros are those? Leading zeros, count them? Nope, leading zeros don't count. There are two sig figs. Number B, what kind of zeros are those? Because the only ones that are trickier are zeros, right? Because sometimes they count, sometimes they don't. So first off, we have this zero. He is called a captive zero. Count them. And the one and the eight will count for sure, right? Now, what about that last zero? That last zero is a what was that? trailing zero with a decimal. What was the rule for that? Trailing zero with a decimal. Count it. They all count, actually. The captive does and the trailing because it has a decimal. Four sig figs. Now, number C. Oh, number C shouldn't be too bad. If you ain't a zero, you'll always count. Four sig figs. All right. 
Number D. Number D is actually the hardest one because we have every kind of zero that is possible. We have leading zeros, leading zeros. Count them or don't count them. Don't count them. They never count. Captive zero, count or don't count. Count. And then what about that last zero? Trailing zero with a decimal. Trailing zero with a decimal. Count it. Now, not only does count, right? The three and the five count. The three and the five, and then this zero, and then this zero. So that gives me a total of four sig figs. All right. What about number E? What kind of zeros are those again? Trailing. They're all trailing. They're on the right-hand side. They're all trailing with a decimal four sig figs. Oh, sorry, not four, five. I misspoke there. There's four zeros. All four zeros count and the one. There's five sig figs. All right. Let's try one last one because I just realized it didn't cover one possibility. What if I gave you this number? How many sig figs? Trailing zeros. No decimal. No decimal. You don't count the trailing zeros this time. There's only one sig fig in this number. Okay. So with that, that's counting up sig figs. So this is going to help us learn to round. We're going to get to rounding in part C of this lecture. Okay. Um, or doing calculations, at least, I should say, and learning how to round calculations in part C. All right, so I do want to show you one last thing to help you out with sig figs, because, again, it does have to do with rounding. So uh, let me flip to my last slide, and let's look at how sig figs and rounding go together just a little bit. Okay, so all of this work, all of this sig fig business really has to do with rounding answers when we do math. Now, before we do any of that, let's just say I gave you an answer and I wanted you to round the number, okay? So, uh, for example, here on this slide, we see, you know, five numbers here, and I want you to round all of them. You know, they, there's more sig figs than I really want. Let's say I wanted you to round them all to have only three sig figs. So let's go through a few examples of how we round to a certain number of sig figs. I want to make sure you hear that, sig figs, sig figs. I want three sig figs. So what I would do is I would count over from my first sig fig, and after the third one, that's where I'm going to start chopping off the rest of the number, all right, getting rid of any extra sig figs. So in number A, 211.75, um, right now, how many sig figs are in that number? Five, right? I only want three. Let's say I wanted only three. So what I would do is I would go over to the third sig fig, sig fig number one, sig fig number two, sig fig number three. I'm going to round at the third sig fig. Now, it just happens in this example, that happens to be right where the decimal is, right there. So the way we're going to round is you look at the next number, the one after the decimal. That, in this case, is the 5. And if that next number is between 0 and 5, you're going to round down. All right, you're going to round down. Oh, I'm sorry, 0 and 4. I misspoke there. 0 and 4, you're going to round. Ooh, this is getting a little messy. Uh, round down. And if the next number is between five and nine, you round up. So there's really two choices. This one is what I'm worried about. I might keep it a one, that's called rounding down, or I might bump that one up and make it a two. I might make it a two. So if I look at this case, the way I'm gonna know, does the one stay a one or does this one become a two? The way I'm going to know that is I look at the next digit. It's a seven. So if it's a seven, you're going to bump it up. All right. It's like, oh, uh, like you're, uh, whatever. All right. So you're going to bump it up. So you're going to move that and you're going to make it a two. So you'd round it to 212. All right. With that seven, I got to go up. All right. Let's do the next one. B. 
Now in B, again, I want to round to three sig figs. So where's the third sig fig after the what? 19.4350. What's the third sig fig? It's the four. So I would want to round right here. I would round after the four. So now the next digit is a three. So do I leave the four a four or do I bump it up to a five? Those are your choices. You're gonna leave it a four. So if that's a, the next digit is a three, we leave the four alone. Three sig figs, if I wanted that number with three sig figs, it would be 19.4. You round the four, you leave the four a four. All right. Yeah, that has three sig figs, doesn't it? 19.4, yeah, that looks okay. Okay, now let's move on to C. Point oh 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 seven five six seven five seven. Man, that's a lot of sig figs. I don't even know how many. It's a bunch, right? I only want three. So I'm gonna go to the third sig fig over. Let me say that again. The third sig fig. So that's not necessarily the third number, right? What's the third sig fig? What's the third sig fig? It's this six right here. This six is the third sig fig, right? Remember, leading zeros to account. Sig fig number one, sig fig number two, sig fig number three. So if that's the third sig fig, that's where we're gonna round. So we're gonna we're gonna round right there. Now the next digit's a five. So we go up. So I still need to write those zeros in the beginning. Don't, don't, don't think you don't need to write them, but they're not part of your sig fig total, right? So the way I would write this answer is I would write 0. 0.0075, and then what? We decided we had to go up, right? So the six could stay a six, but not in this case. The six, we have to make it a seven. 0. 0.00757, okay. With that, let's do the next one. Let's do the next one. All right. I don't know. How many sig figs are in D right now? Six, right? I don't want six. I only want to go, I only want to have three. So I'm going to round this thing to three. That's the whole practice we're doing right now. How do you get it down to three? All right. <clears throat> so I go to the third sig fig over, which means I'm going to round after the what? I'm going to round after the seven. So I need to round right here. And the next digit is a six. So does this stay a seven? Or do we make it an eight? Oh, we need to make it an eight, don't we? We have to go up. All right, because the next number is uh, more than five, we've got to bump up this digit. We're gonna make it an eight. So if I wanted to round it correctly, I suppose it'd be one, eight, eight. 188. Uh-oh, does any, do you think there might be a problem with this? This is where it gets a little tricky. The reason why it gets a little tricky is if you look at this number that I started with, and let's imagine it's like a bunch of money. Let's say it was like, I don't know. Let's say it was uh, in terms of dollars. My original number was 1876.16. That's like $1,800. If that's how much money you have in your bank account, 1876.17, like $1,876 and 17 cents. And your wife or your friend or whoever says, oh, about how much money do you have? You know, maybe you're trying to go buy something together or whatever. And would you tell them, would you say, well, I have roughly $188? No, you would not say, if this is what's in your bank account, you would not tell them, oh, I have about $188. So what you often have to do when you round, now, not all the time, Certainly not all the time. We've done three examples. This hasn't come up yet. But once in a while, you need to add zeros to the end of a number so that you don't accidentally take, a, you know, a pretty good amount of money and round it and make it a small amount of money or a small answer, in other words. 
So what I would want to do in this case is I need to add a zero on the end. I'm going to change every digit to that decimal basically to a zero. Why am I doing that? So that my original number, which is pretty big, when I'm done rounding, I still have a pretty big number. So, um, uh, so my 1,876 number, I would round it to 1,880. So this adding zeros on the end, you don't need to do it all the time, but you need to do it whenever you run into a situation where without that zero, you're going to have an accidentally make your answer mean way less than it should. So that number right here, by the way, let's just confirm, right? I'm supposed to be rounding to three sig figs. Does that have three sig figs? Yeah, it does, right? because that's a trailing zero without a decimal. So we got our three sig figs there. This in fact does have three sig figs. And I also wanna double check that I kept a big answer, still a big answer. Just like, let me tell you, sometimes in C, people would round C to this. Remember C? What I have for C is correct. But some students I see once in a while, they'll write the answer like this. They'll just write 754 they won't include those beginning zeros. And if they don't include those beginning zeros, that's a big problem. Because a small number, when you round, has to stay a small number. Just like a big number has to stay a big number. All right, that can be a little confusing, all right? So uh, we'll uh, talk more about that um, when we do some of these in Zoom, probably. All right, so let's do uh, E while we're at it, though. E, 21,564. How would you round that to three sig figs? You would round after the five. This is a six. So do you leave the five alone or do you make it go up? You have to go up. Round up, bump it up, all right? So you would go to 21,006, oh, sorry, 216 so far. But wait a minute, is that gonna work? My original number is like the price of a car, right? $21,000. You would not tell your friend you paid about $216. That makes absolutely no sense in any way at all, okay? So what would you have to do? You'd have to add a couple of zeros on the end to keep your big number still a big number. All right, so adding zeros on the end, typically it happens when we have a large answer and we're trying to make it a large answer. So don't accidentally change it into a small number, all right? Um, all right, so with that, um, maybe uh, we should try one more. All right, let's try two more. What the heck? F, G, let's see, F, let's do this one. 0 0.09552, what's that gonna be rounded in G while we're at it? Oh, let's make it like this. Oh, rats, I didn't mean to write that. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, race. Uh, what about, uh, sorry, let me fix that. How about in G, doing another color. How about, uh, some... all right, what are those rounded? All right, you might pause them in for a minute and see if you can do it. All right, let's go over it in a second. You can pause it if you really want to think about it. Three sig figs for F. I would round after the... The second five, point oh nine five five. That's got three sig figs. And then in G, if I want to round after the third sig fig, I'd round after the second seven. Seven, five, seven. Are you done? No, you're not done. Seven, five, seven. 757,111 rounds to 757. Seven. Zero, zero, zero. All right, so you have to you have to make all those ones into zeros. That's got three sig figs when we're done. That looks better. All right, if you're all mixed up on this, this can be a little confusing. This is like one of those things where it take, might take you a little while to kind of get it straight in your head. And if that's true, you can email me and call me. You can, uh, well, I have Zoom office hours. You can come by and get some help. Uh, also, when we do our live Zoom sessions, we're going to review this just a little bit more in case you're stuck, because often people are, unfortunately. All right. So with that, there's still one more section to this video you need to watch. 
uh, on using these in calculations. So we'll get to that in just a minute. That'll be part C.